we're taking yet another trip down memory lane and looking at some of the best video games of the year 2001. Now, as you know, we've covered every year from 2000 on. This is our list for 2001, of course, and so many games released during that year. So we're looking forward to hearing your personal list down in the comments too. But let's get started off with number 10 and talk about Conker's Bad Fur Day, the surprise, raunchy, insane, over-the-top Nintendo 64 game from Rare really was genuinely unique, not just for the subject matter and what it was, but also because it actually ended up being pretty ahead of its time. This game actually still plays surprisingly well today. Yeah, it doesn't look that great anymore, but still, the humor is there, the gameplay's kind of there, and generally, if you were the right age, Conker's Bad Fur Day was the, the perfect game to sneak by your parents. I mean, the, the premise is great. A cute little squirrel, his name is Conker, he's having a bad fur day. Yeah, sure, your parents will get you that game for Christmas. How bad could it be? Well, turns out it's filled with blood, gore, boobs, drinking, and a lot of really good raunchy humor, but in a great meta style, kind of poking fun at video game stuff, being very self-aware. The context sensitive button bit always makes me laugh still to this day. Uh, the great Mighty Pooh and his song. There's so many memories attached to this game that it, it is still worth experiencing today. Uh, they did kind of remake it and put it on the original Xbox, but when it released, Conker's Bad Fur Day was basically the game that every kid was talking about on the playground, and they probably shouldn't have, but it was filled with cool and Alien references, the Matrix references, a Saving Private Ryan war scene with a bunch of gore, money that talks and smokes cigars. I can go on and on about all the weird dumb crap they put in this game, and I love it. Now next at number 9, let's talk about another Office favorite, that is SSX Tricky. This over-the-top, arcadey, fun snowboard game was probably, honestly, the last gasp of great snowboard games for a while. I mean, Cool Borders, 1080, those were things of the past. SSX Tricky really took the formula from the previous game and added some more content and just amped it up and made it a really great package. It was put out by EA Sports Big. Does anybody remember EA Sports Big? It was kind of like their obnoxious label to put out like cool over the top action sports. Well, SSX Tricky definitely fit the bill uh, with wild, crazy, colorful cast of characters, over the top cool tricks and moves you can do midair, giant courses that felt larger than life and a really good emphasis on music and how the music would change and react to how you play, and also, of course, the Run DMC song, which they kind of overused and abused, but you know what? I love Run DMC, so I don't really care. SSX did have kind of a comeback a couple of years ago, but it never really reached the heights of SSX Tricky. It was one of the greatest games to release at the time for like action sports games. You know, not counting Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, of course, but like this was such a good time and we wanted to mention it here. We'd be crazy if we didn't. Next at number eight, we have Final Fantasy X, the first Final Fantasy game released for PlayStation 2, and the first to really make the jump to complete fully 3D graphics and gameplay. Really, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't make too much of a difference to gameplay compared to the previous games in the series, but at the time, it was just a really big deal because the game did look really damn incredible. Characters were lifelike, their faces had emotions, the new world, the new style, the new look of the characters, their clothing, where they live, the items they used here were just so unique. It also had one of the most insane and exciting openings of games released that year. Xanarkand was just such a cool Cool sequence, Blitzball, as both something shown in cutscenes and as a playable side option mode, was so much fun. You learned to fall in love with these characters, Tidus, Yuna, Waka, Orin, all of these characters that would essentially join the pantheon of great, memorable Final Fantasy characters. They were all here, with of course that excellent, memorable, signature Final Fantasy music, and just a lengthy, compelling story that you wanted to see to the end. This one actually had a pretty good amount of twists and turns to it. Final Fantasy X has an interesting spot in the series' history, uh, for a lot of reasons. For some people, it was their first introduction to the big ol' franchise. Uh, for some people, it's one of their least favorite and kind of overrated ones. Personally, I absolutely loved it and found it to be near perfect, except for a couple of weird sequences, which I feel like you can say about pretty much any Final Fantasy game. Uh, but it did go on to sell over 8.5 million copies by 2013. Whether you like it or not, I think it was a very historic point in Final Fantasy's history, so we had to mention it here. Now, next at number seven, we have Silent Hill 2. Where to start with this one? Probably the, one of the most iconic and chilling 
creepy looking games of the time. I remember even just the marketing materials, ads and magazines and stuff to be incredibly unsettling. The game itself definitely lived up to all that. This is where Silent Hill as a series like really came into its own. You get more of an idea of the town itself and why it is how it is and how it kind of preys upon people's psyche to kind of represent different things for different people. Uh, the game was classic, good old straight up survival horror. It was very challenging. The enemies were unnerving. The graphics for the time, from the fog to the lighting engine, you know, the, the flashlight down the dark, creepy hallways, the game looked fantastic. I really, really wish Konami didn't like totally botch the HD re-release of it from a few years back. You play as James Sunderland who comes to Silent Hill after he gets a letter from his wife who has been dead for quite some time. It gets more complicated than that, but yeah. Considering it is like a spooky, empty, fog-riddled town, you do come across quite a cast of characters, all very interesting and well represented, especially with some really great looking pre-rendered cutscenes. Silent Hill 2 is really unnerving, like I said, from the actual survival horror gameplay to like the psychosexual elements, to the gore, to Pyramid Head, to the music, to the loneliness, everything about it is so, so special, and I still recommend you considering experiencing it to this day. Now next at number six, let's talk about Max Payne. Yes, the original game developed by Remedy that really changed things for a lot of people, including myself. It was one of the best third-person story-based shooters of all time. Max Payne was like a disgraced New York City detective uh, searching for leads after his wife and child were brutally murdered. You're just essentially a hard-boiled, take-no-shit detective cop that was basically like from every movie in the 90s, but here it was told with a really, really exciting and interesting noir style. The story progressed through beautifully hand-painted comic book panels with great voice acting and music. And then of course the actual moment to moment gameplay was third person action where you're diving around in slow motion bullet time, firing off bullets, diving down stairs, riddling bad guys with bullets in a gory, over the top and incredibly satisfying fashion. It took place in a surprisingly convincing Manhattan during a snowstorm and just the mood, the atmosphere, the style, everything about this game they just completely, completely nailed and it still holds up to this day. The only thing that doesn't really hold up is Max Payne's face himself. Sam Lake, a writer at Remedy, of course, as you probably know, served as the model for the face of Max Payne in the original game, and it still looks like they just took a photograph of his face and slapped it over a character model. It's really funny, but at the time, it was incredibly iconic. It really worked for the game, and kind of gave the game its own identity, you know? I cannot say enough good things about Max Payne. Uh, this, this is one of my favorite games ever. Honestly, the year 2001 had so many great games, we gotta keep going with number five and talk about Devil May Cry. Another one one of my personal favorites, and I know for a lot of people, it's the start of a beloved series. The original Devil May Cry really had a bit of an identity crisis. It partially wanted to be a survival horror game, it partially wanted to be an action game, uh, it partially wanted to be spooky, but then on the other hand, it wanted to be over the top in anime. And you know what? For me, at the time, it just hit just right. You have Dante the Demon Slayer, mercenary for hire type guy who goes to Malay Island, a mysterious spooky island with a castle, of course, after he's tipped off by Trish. Dante, if you don't know, is actually the son of Sparta, so Dante is part demon. That very much comes into gameplay very quick once you start getting some powers. All that stuff was great, but really it was the gameplay, the perfect like hybrid. You have a sword, and guns, two very cool weapons that were very easy to switch between. The combat emphasized you racking up combos and a style meter to really just be as badass as you can and change up your moves and not repeat the same thing over and over again. It gets easier to do so as the game goes on. You unlock more abilities, you unlock more weapons you can swap between, and you can ultimately just be a complete badass fighting off all sorts of weird creatures and demons and spooky ghosts and it was incredibly challenging it still is to this day i think the actual hd remakes are actually a bit more difficult but still it is absolutely worth playing you know for a lot of people they think of devil may cry they think of devil may cry 3 devil may cry 4 stuff like that but really there was a special time with the original devil may cry it came out of nowhere it was unexpected and it was really really unique and i still love it it's very near and dear to my heart but i'm very curious to hear what you guys think in the comments if you love the original as much as I do. I even defend too, which I shouldn't, but that's a whole nother story. Down to number four, we have another iconic game, this time a sequel. It's Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Whoo boy, where to begin with this one? For me, as a diehard Metal Gear Solid fan, this was one of my most anticipated games of all time. The continuation of Solid Snake's story. Uh, mm, 
not quite. So, as many of you probably know, the game was marketed very much to be yet another solid snake game. It was more Metal Gear Solid. Uh, ultimately, we got the game and realized that you only really played as Snake for the first two hours. The rest of the game you play as Raiden, who is seemingly the complete opposite of Solid Snake. That was Hideo Kojima being creative and subverting people's expectations in a lot of ways, but at the time, it was it was it was weird. People were kind of mixed on it, you know. Now, of course, looking back, history has been kind to Raiden, but at the time, it was unexpected. Still, I think what we got here was a great game that was almost as iconic as the original Metal Gear Solid in terms of scenarios, gameplay, bosses, creative characters, little weird gameplay quirks, stuff like that. And honestly, if you look it up and you read into it, just like where and, and what Hideo Kojima was trying to do with the story, what he was trying to say, it was actually pretty ahead of its time. Just the state of politics, culture, internet and how the internet plays into a lot of that and just general information it's pretty wild the story definitely goes off the rails and gets really abstract but still actually playing it actually experiencing it is a ton of fun just really really good stealth action gameplay uh, also the game holds up looks wise it really still looks great that is just great art direction because everything is still very clear and very clearly telegraphed you know things don't get lost in the mud like a lot of ps2 games here do and also i just want to say I, I know i said earlier in this list that final fantasy 10 had one of the best intros to a game this year um, I'd actually say Metal Gear Solid 2, Solid Snake jumping off the George Washington Bridge. That is still one of the coolest things ever. But I digress. Sorry, Super Metal Gear fan here. I I'll move on. Next at number three, let's talk about Super Smash Brothers Melee, the follow-up to the surprise hit Super Smash Brothers. This one was released on GameCube and really expanded things and became like massive, insanely massive. I, I can't even really articulate how big of a deal this game was for GameCube, for Nintendo fans, and just gaming in general. Super Smash Bros. Melee still holds on today in the fighting game tournament. That says so much right there. This was the Super Smash Brothers game that, that really put the franchise on the map. I mean, just think, this game released in 2001. We're talking about it in 2020, and it's probably one of the more relevant games on this list because people are still playing it right now as we speak. Not only that, putting all that stuff aside, just like the, the complete overhaul in graphics, taking it to the next level, all the new modes they added, all the new items and abilities. This game was just a hell of a follow-up to Super Smash Brothers, even if you were just a casual fan of the series. I think its legacy and how long it has lasted is very important to point out, but I think it's also very important to not lose sight of the fact that it's just so much fun. This is a good game and a really good time. But down to number two, let's talk about Halo Combat Evolved, another game that really surprised people and thankfully paved the way for Microsoft to enter the console gaming market. Now, I do want to get real for a second though, like a lot of people, like younger folks out there, think you know, Halo Combat Evolved was really the first big first person shooter. It was not. It was a huge success, of course, and it revolutionized things, but I, I just want to point out, because I'm like an insufferable PC nerd, we were already playing Quake like crazy, but I, I do want to point out that Halo Combat Evolved really, really paved the way for first person shooters to be a legitimate and competent thing on consoles played with a controller. In a lot of ways, it was kind of like Halo Combat Evolved was the left hook, and then Halo 2 a few years later was the right hook knockout punch. But the way the game felt, the way the first person aspects controlled, just made this game incredibly fun and addictive, and it sold a lot of Xboxes. Word of mouth was still a very powerful thing at the time, and I remember scrounging up and buying an Xbox because of Halo, and then showing it to other people who had no idea what Halo was, and then they ran out, and got an Xbox as well. That's a hell of a thing. And honestly, like, you know, if Microsoft didn't have that, I don't know if we'd be talking about Xbox today. I don't know if that's incredibly reductive or anything. That's just me. I am really glad that Halo Combat Evolved does exist because, you know, most first person shooters on console before that were way less streamlined and way less fun to play. Whereas Halo was like a well-oiled machine. Like I said, from the first person mechanics to the large open environments, the visuals, the vehicle sections and how they controlled, all that stuff was great. Just a solid package that we still talk about today. But of course, at number one, I'm, say it with me now, Grand Theft Auto 3. The game that really put Rockstar games on the map is how they are today. The game that also very much reignited the video game violence debate that was kind of simmering after Mortal Kombat a few years back. Grand Theft Auto 3 was embroiled in lots of controversy, but also 
It's a damn good game. We had had open world games before it, but none like this. None where you really felt free to run around a city and do whatever you want. Something about it just hit absolutely right. Uh, the way it embraced a lot of pop culture, it had mafia elements, Liberty City was a really fun recreation and kind of stylized version of New York. The driving mechanics were a ton of fun. Racing through the streets was easy and arcadey. Beating up random people in the streets with baseball bats and shooting people and then getting the cops to chase you and see how many wanted level stars you could bring up was just so much fun even if you weren't following the main storyline quests. This game just had hours and hours of fun and an entire city to explore that just felt like nothing else we had experienced. It also paved the way for a long line of not only GTA clones but just an entire new genre of open world action games that we're still just getting tons of to this day. Thankfully there has been a lot of innovations on this formula. The Grand Theft Auto series itself has come a very long way but Grand Theft Auto 3 was really the ground floor, the starting bed of things. No slight to Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2, of course, those top-down games were fun as well. But 3 is an absolute legend, and uh, there are a lot of games out today that would be nothing without Grand Theft Auto 3's foundation, so we thank them for that. And I do want to point out before we go, some bonus games we gotta mention. Of course, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Eco released that year, believe it or not, of the original Luigi's Mansion, Animusha Warlords, and Jack and Daxter. Those are some really great and important and fun games that we love that we think are worth mentioning in 2001. But of course, like I said, so many games released this year. So we want to hear your list down in the comments. What are some of your favorite or some of your most important significant games that released that year, if you were even alive? And whoever you are, let's talk about video games down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys what your favorite games were. If you enjoyed this video though, and maybe learned something, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We'd really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.